We're talking about the new Nick Cage movie. Stick around. Set in the treacherous frontier city of Samurai Town, where a ruthless bank robber is sprung from jail by wealthy warlord the Governor, whose adopted granddaughter Bernice has gone missing. The Governor offers the prisoner his freedom in exchange for retrieving the runaway. Strapped into a leather suit that will self-destruct within three days, the bandit sets off on a journey to find the young woman and his own path to redemption. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Burns Reviews. If you want early movie reviews just like these, be sure to give it a swipe and give it a thumbs up and push all those little buttons down below if you could. Preferably the like button because YouTube really does like to keep our videos pushed way, way down. So a simple thumbs up like can really turn that all around. It really does help out a lot. And today we're talking about Prisoners of the Ghostland, which is the latest Nicolas Cage outing where he's going batshit crazy. And uh, yeah, so... Let's just go straight into the positives, because, yeah, let's just do that. The positives being Nicolas Cage, right? You came here to see him act crazy. He even says it's the wildest movie I've ever done. Um, although the director says, no, that's not really true. He thinks Wild at Heart is the craziest movie that he's ever done. In fact, Nicolas Cage even said that he was directed in such a way to make this character... 50-50 parts of Wild at Heart and Caster Troy from Face Off. And you know what? I can see that a little bit. I can see that. So if you just want to see a movie where they take Wild at Heart at F and Face Off and combine it into one movie, into one character, I think that's pretty interesting. Personally speaking, the fact that he shows up dressed all in black, he's kind of quiet, he's driving that black car, you could easily say this is like a sequel or a prequel or a spin-off to Willy's Wonderland because the character in that and in this really aren't that dissimilar too much. Um, and talking positives, I really like the action in this movie. There were sword fights in this movie, there were hand-to-hand -hand, like John Wick type of fights, not nearly that good, but the action is pretty solid and the sword fighting was really great. Uh, they filmed it in Japan, it was supposed to be filmed in Mexico, but they moved it to, to Japan because Nicolas Cage and the director had to, I think, because of the, the pandemic. Um, and apparently the script took 17 years to get this made, which is interesting because I find the script to be kind of tedious and annoying. Um, so go into the pros, and I'm doing the best that I can here, guys. Nicolas Cage acting bonkers which for like a two hour somewhat movie, uh, you only get a good seven minutes of that total. I am radioactive. He's in it. They don't do that thing where he's walking around and they're shooting the back of his head and it's clearly not Nicolas Cage. It is Nicolas Cage. He is there. But much like Willy's Wonderland, he doesn't say too much. He's either being dragged or... You know, he's, he's on a cart being pulled at one point, or he's just kind of staying quiet. He There's not a lot of dialogue from Nicolas Cage. There is a lot of dialogue, and now I'm going to go into the negatives, um, with all the, the geisha characters and all these random prisoner characters like that, that feel very out of place. And it's... If it's the, ugh, I'm sorry, this, this movie is just so bad. If it's not boring the hell out of you, it's assaulting you with characters that either cry, scream, or giggle in your face to nauseam. Um, some might call this movie a western. Some have said that it uses many genres. I find it to be a complete and utter mess. I found it completely unwatchable. I kept rewinding the movie because I would get distracted and kind of doze off. I'd be like, this movie is boring. And I'd have to like rewind it, and I'd be like, well, I didn't miss anything. We're following characters now that have nothing to do with the plot. They're just window dressing. They're kind of establishing where you are and who these characters are and whatnot. So there's a lot of questions that this movie's going to leave you with, and a lot of them that they're not going to answer, and I found it to be a waste of my time, frankly. I would recommend you go check out the movie Pig. I would even say go check out Willy's Wonderland if you want to see some high-octane Nicolas Cage just going batshit crazy. I've got video links right here. I've got end explain videos, and I've got reviews for those movies over here. But this movie, I'm sadly to say, uh, as much as I love Nicolas Cage, I'm going to have to give this movie an F. It's just bad. It is so unwatchable. It's You start to, to think like, you know, hey... 
people making this movie, you know we, like, go to see this movie. You're wasting our time. Why are you doing this? Um, not to be mean, but this movie just feels like a wet fart in the wind. So I'm going to give it an F. And, yeah, be sure to go check out uh, some of these other better Nicolas Cage videos that I have right here. And until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching. We just hit 5,000 subscribers. Thank you so much. I think we're going to do a live stream over the weekend. I don't know. What would you guys like to see us do? Be sure to comment down below. And until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching. I've been John here on Burns Views. You just got burned, and we will see you next time.